event like this, everyone. Uh, I just want to say thank you to all of you who came out and are supporting me right now. Uh, this is... Yeah, thank you, Bryn. This is really crazy, um, but let's dive right into it. So, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jared Wisdom, and today I would like to talk to you all about the lack of diversity in American leadership. And so, I have like a short video that helps to uh, show who makes up the American democracy. So, here we go. Please pay attention. Have you ever wondered, what does America actually look like? Let's zoom out from the people we see in the media and the people we talk to every day. And look at the big picture. About 314 million of us live in the United States. 51% of us are women. And 49% of us are men. 63% of us are white. 37% of us are people of color. Our country is changing fast. But are the people who represent us, from city council to Congress, keeping up with that change? Do we live in a reflective democracy? We did some research, and here's what we found. We studied 42,000 elected officials who represent us, from the county level all the way up to Congress. If they reflected America's population, our elected officials should look like this. But it actually looks like this. 71% of elected officials are men. 90% are white and 65% are white men. That means men have three times as much power as women, and white Americans also have three times as much power as people of color, and white men have eight times as much power as women of color. When 31% of the population controls 65% of elected offices, is it a surprise that most Americans feel our democracy is broken? To learn more about the data we've collected, visit us. So, I don't know if you guys saw those numbers, but they are absolutely staggering. Um, but I know some of you in here are still wondering, uh, what's, what's the problem? Well, the main problem is underrepresentation. The lack, of, the lack of diversity in American leadership dates all the way back to 1789 when George Washington was inaugurated as the first president of the United States. This number right here represents how many presidents the United States has had. <laughs> the same number depicts how many have been male. And to finish it off, 43 of these men, I mean 43 of these men have been white. This leaves women and minorities feeling disconnected and unimportant from City Hall all the way to Congress. So what can we do? My first solution is education. By properly funding all schools, there would be an equal playing field created for all students. This would result in more opportunities for women and minorities to hold positions of elected office, creating a more well-rounded type of democracy, which would include more Americans. During an interview with Rosario Orengo, a teacher at the Urban Assembly Unison School, she said, I believe that our political leaders are not only predominantly white, but I would also argue that they also had access to good schooling, whether public or private. This statement reinforces the idea that strong education for all students is vital in order to diversify the leadership in the United States. As we move on, my second solution is the redevelopment of the American political process. See, certain subtle changes would help fix this bipartisan problem, such as political parties recruiting by residents, which would ensure proper representation for all regions, allowing more candidates to speak at conventions and debates, leading to more interaction with citizens, and reforming the campaigning process so that it is not necessary to have money to efficiently campaign. I'm not sure if many of you know this, but in total, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton spent $6.6 .6 billion to campaign in the most recent election. And that's absolutely absurd. That, that's insane. I, I know I don't have that much money. You do? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. By reconstructing the political process, access to leadership will be granted to more women and minorities. So, what does this all mean? Well, 
Improving the American education system would introduce a more diverse group of leaders in the United States while also making sure the United States continues to lead the world in technology and sciences. And by renovating the American democracy, more women and minorities would be introduced with the opportunity of holding elected offices. Both solutions would leave the United States with more involved and well-developed leaders that, are, that will represent many different Americans. However, many claim that by changing the traditional American education, education system and democracy, more problems will arise. As French Montana would say, if you ain't got no haters, you ain't poppin'. And so with that, let's debunk these claims. There's a lot of room for improvement in the American education system that currently only favors students who attend schools with proper funding. And as you can see, there's always room for improvement even when there's not. Uh, that quote is by me. And as for the democracy, it has been named a broken one for years and has certainly left the United States in shambles via its, this most recent election. An article published by The Atlantic has a passage reading, the system can be rebuilt, but first it must be torn down, which basically helps to acknowledge that it is time for change if the United States would like to see a more diverse group of leaders. It is quite easy to see that the improvements to these systems need to be set in place to resolve the lack of diversity in American leadership roles. And with the United States currently very disconnected, what better time to make the change? So, ladies and gentlemen, I, I would like for you all to understand that I am not against white male leadership. However, there are many Americans who feel as though they don't have a say in this country. So I would like to leave you all with a question. Uh, that question is, how can we all come together and resolve the lack of diversity in American leadership roles? Uh, again, my name is Jared Wisdom, and I would like to thank you all for your time today.